Okay, so today I have kind of a fun example for you guys. This is the chart of Bam Margera, the famous professional skateboarder, <clears throat> and uh, who is even more famous for Jackass and the famous TV show and, you know, doing all kinds of stunts and pranks and whatnot. Now, interestingly enough, uh, I was just... I'm I'm a skateboarder from the past, as you guys can see on my YouTube channel. I've even uploaded a few skate clips and stuff. Um, I was very, you know, influenced by Bam Margera and a lot of those people when I was younger. Um, and then recently I was reading something about him in the news. I guess there's been some, you know, he got there's been some tougher things for him. He got kicked out of Jackass for I, I guess being too much of a Jackass, as he put it, which I thought was kind of funny. Um, so in the course of that, someone left a comment saying like, oh, this is his birth time. I don't know if that helps because someone was talking about astrology. I was like, oh, wow, let's look at it. And this birth time makes a lot of sense, but I don't know how true that is, but I just got that from someone randomly on the internet. So it makes a lot of sense, but <clears throat> just keep that in mind. And, um, if anyone does know if this is Bam Marger's birth time, Bam, if you happen to ever be listening to this, let me know. And uh, thanks for being such an insanely good mini ramp skater. Um, <clears throat> so let's just go into analyzing this chart. All right. So he has Libra rising. So the rising sign is Libra. That sets up certain themes in life, which is the theme of like being on the end of the receiving end of karma, like karmic balancing almost. Um, it's the sign of trade and relationships and socializing and tactfulness and diplomacy. He actually is pretty good at that stuff um, in an overall sense, even if, you know, you don't, even if he seems very uh, like crude and abrasive um, at first. Uh it's ruled by Venus. Venus is the planet of relationships. But what's funny is on a deeper level, um, if you, you know, if you take my course stuff, you've already learned about this, but the sign of villains is Libra. Libra is the sign of the villain. Aries is the opposite sign, the sign of the hero. The Libra incarnation is an incarnation of, of uh, <clears throat> fulfilling desires, seeking out desires. And see, that's the thing is in Vedic astrology, it's different. In Western, they say Libra is like so flowery and like lovey-dovey. But when you really look at it, like a lot of the Libras in the world have done some of the gnarliest things, some of the nastiest things. Um, Prashara says Libra has the nature of a killer. And it's because Libra and Venus is the plan of desires. And it's our desires and our passion for things that can either make or break us. You know, people kill out of passion and desire. They call it a crime of passion. You know what I'm saying? So that's Libra. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is his, his chart was not meant to be a chart of like being virtuous and doing the right thing and being heroic. No, he's on the other end of that he's he's already done that he's on um the libra side of things and it's more about kama the aim of life that is pleasure you know and desire like think kama sutra the book about sex and pleasure right so this is all interesting because we know his life fits that more he's got mercury venus on the ascendant that's a really good thing to make your personality likable char charismatic etc mercury's curiosity Venus is uh, enjoyment and fulfillment. So he's got a lot of that, like those good personality qualities going for him, but he's got the sun in Libra. Sun on the ascendant in Libra, it is delighted by Mars a little bit, but it's not got a whole lot of delight on it. So he can suffer from some of the negative sides of Libra, which is like putting on airs. You'll notice Libra sun, if it's not too helped out by other things, and if it's afflicted by its enemy Venus, like in this case, you get someone who kind of just puts on airs, you know, pretends like there's something more than they aren't. That was definitely a big part of his vibe, you know, like um, just real image focused, um, style focused. And overall, I mean, he had he had much better style than a lot of skaters because of that good Venus. 
So basically what I'm trying to say is his Venus is real good. So his pleasure and luxuries and enjoyment of life has, he's gotten a lot of that, but his son, the son is like your destiny, who you are, your self-esteem, your inspiration, your enthusiasm. I'm just going to be me no matter what, you know, I'm going to charge at life. That's debilitated in his, in his chart. And so he's, you know, he's got not got as much of that, like internal sense of destiny and this is who I am and, whatever like a strong son is not easily affected by praise or by punishment or rebuking or criticism they just keep going but see what this saying is that this chart is saying here that um oh okay like he's gonna really want the validation the social validation the venus you see his son is gonna get starved by venus and his son is the 11th Lord, the Lord of like groups and friends. And he's got this powerful Mars, Jupiter, wealth yoga in the 11th. So he's got a big chart for getting like validation from friends and um, support and like basically getting his self esteem boosted by his stunts or by showing off or by entertaining and acting a fool. You see like Venus and Mercury, Mercury is tricks, Venus is conveyances. Put those together in a wind sign, skateboarding. Duh. You know, I've already made a case for skateboarding, um, being ruled by Venus and having a lot to do with Libra as well as Aquarius. Um, you can watch another older video about that if you like. But this is the, what this is showing is this chart of like, okay, someone who's going to kind of get rewarded for validation for like, social validation more for more than get rewarded for who they are or be be like happy about who they are this is going to create a pattern so you see like this another way you could see it is that venus and sun gives issues about social conditioning basically like um the people who kind of just go with the herd and go with the flow and don't really do what's right for them but do what they think is cool or just going to make them cooler or this or that that's someone who has a starved son by Venus. Um, if sun's much stronger and Venus is much weaker, one will tend to ignore all the social things and just focus on their goals and their sense of self. So uh, basically he was recognized, you know, and got recognition and got, he was kind of conditioned to seek validation from others um, for wild stunts and things like that because the sun rules the 11th and it rules that jupiter and mars which is kind of like a thing which makes you lucky around danger um but the jupiter is actually an evil planet for libra rising if you guys I also i'm not going to take the time to teach you all these techniques like you can go and study with me if you want to learn this stuff but yeah if you know about the prashara dharma karma adipati yogas like how for each rising sign there are planets that become yoga makers that create raja yoga and there are yoga breakers well as you may know the 11th lord is always evil in the chart so the sun is actually a yoga breaker planet um for him so he has this mercury venus together in the ascendant that's a raja yoga a really powerful yoga that makes him active in his dharma okay because of the first lord venus combining with the ninth lord mercury so first lord is an angle so he's active angular you know action involving in ninth house dharma his sense of dharma <clears throat> it's just too bad that damn sun was there obstructing it but you see it's debilitated so it didn't obstruct it that much um and that's why he was still so successful but now we're seeing the problems because now is the time in life when he needs to shift into his son and stop just being a, a child and stopping a kid and stopping an immature venus person doing drugs and partying and blah 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 and needs to step into becoming a father more because he has a son and that's his de his debilitated son it's like really not easy you see um if he was to come to someone like me for reading that i would be like all about trying to augment and boost up that son and diminish that venus a bit and not like diminish it but just leave it alone we could say um oh and then the other thing I, I i got sidetracked there but yeah so the jupiter becomes the other one of the other evil planets for libra rising because it rules the third and the sixth and jupiter is uh 
in the 11th creating this yoga, you know? So Jupiter is kind of also involving him in yoga breaking or what we could say like activities that are more for validation than they are for dharma. That's the thing you may have learned if you're, you may, you may not understand this. It took me a long time to understand this because uh, when you're first learning astrology, you learn that a planets in the 11th are always good, but the 11th Lord is always evil. What? That doesn't make sense. It's because the 11th Lord will always make you seek validation because that's what the 11th house is about, like getting validation and getting recognition. And that's one of the hugest problems in life. And that's one of the hugest things that throws you off from your dharma, your purpose. What is your innate calling in life? So we see that happening a lot here. And then at the same time, Mars and Jupiter are in the 11th, so they're good for the 11th. So Mars and Jupiter in the 11th is this major money-making placement. So that's why he made a ton of money from Mars and Jupiter things like skateboarding, danger, just jumping off of a big building, you know, jumping off of a roof, you know, just going and doing a crazy warrior Kshatriya thing, you know, Mars delighted by you and then being lucky enough to not break your arm or leg or whatever not too much you know he still got hurt a lot but to survive through so many things is the blessings of that jupiter there um so this is kind of how you're able to see like the good and bad that one single placement can do you know like that jupiter at makarica even in the 11th huge amount of money coming in huge amount of sponsorship gains paychecks coming in rubbing noses rubbing elbows with influential people jupiter's in maga nakshatra of the pitchers the fathers his father is like the one that he pranked and would always beat up and mess with and who would never fight him back which is exactly jupiter you see like jupiter always delights every planet but does not hurt any other planet even if it's their enemy even if it's hurting him like mercury and venus will do So, yeah, very interesting examples here. Um, remember that Mercury uh, is in the first house of career and the body. And so it's like using the body also for stunts and for activities. And then that what kind of activities? Well, Venus is vehicles, conveyances, skateboards. Um, and... You know, it's it's just really kind of cool how clearly that shows up as the theme of his rising sun. And uh, that it's just, yeah, I guess so. So the Mars and Jupiter is a really good combination, um, but it is it does come out a little bit more egotistical in this sort of inflection, I guess, is what I want to say, because um, that Mars is extremely lucky around danger because of being delighted by Jupiter and in the 11th house um, and manifested by Mercury and its Lord, the sun and Jupiter. Yeah. Wow. That's a, that's a really well manifested Mars. If you know the Gemini second strength techniques, that's what I'm talking about there. Rashi aspecting. Um, again, that's something you got to know well, but you can take my course if you want to know about that. Um, but yeah, so the Mars is extremely manifested in like actually every way possible. Um, so extremely lucky around danger, but the reason it has more, it's see, this is like another placement that can make you a yogi is what I'm trying to get. Or you've heard me say this before in other combinations and other houses and with other things, but it's because, um, you know, it's not involved in Dharma for a Libra rising. And in fact, it's doing the opposite. It's connecting to the sixth Lord, the egotistical sixth, third and sixth Lord, and in the 11th house, and it's ruling just the seventh and the second. So nothing really Dharmic involved with that Mars. Um, now, this is the now, this is the really interesting thing that I that I thought, wow, like, I've got to do an example on this when I looked at his chart, because everybody talked about how um everything changed for him when his good friend like childhood best friend ryan dunn got in a dui and passed away that happened for him right around the beginning of his moon dasha his moon is in sagittarius jimini in the jimini techniques if you take take my course or um studied with other people who have taught this Sagittarius is the sign of falls from heights. 
it's the sign of basically literally Jaimini says while proceeding a fall from a height. So it literally means Sag is the sign of being thrown from your horse in the old days. It's the sign of car accidents in modern days because that's the same thing as being thrown from a horse, right? A fall from a height or if Sag is not afflicted at all, it's really good. It can mean th something kind of falls in front of you or falls in your lap. But it's usually afflicted, so it's usually more of a fall from a height or a difficult thing that happens because Sag is a sign of hitting the goal. Well, you don't always hit the goal when there's cruel plants involved. And look at what's Rashi aspects. Again, you only use Rashi aspects for this technique, and this is a really high-level advanced technique you have to learn well. So don't expect to just learn this right now. But for those who've already taken my courses or other courses that have covered this, isn't this a ridiculously amazing and cool example of the fall from a height because as moon dasha ran moon is in sag rashi aspected only by malefics saturn and rahu and k2 but we just count rahu when it's k2 and rahu both aspecting so saturn rahu boom like there is something unavoidable and difficult about that moon um the the moon is in Mula Nakshatra also, which is a really, really inauspicious, unfortunate nakshatra, which deals with things falling apart and crumbling. It's the it's ruled by, you know, a Lakshmi. Literally, Lakshmi is the goddess of fortune. A Lakshmi is the goddess of misfortune. So you have to learn to take misfortunes and spiritualize them and transform them when you have Mula Nakshatra. And like, if but if it's afflicted, you overly dwell on them and overly fixate on them and can't move past them. And that's what happened with him because of all these afflictions. He was definitely really wounded by this event. I mean, this event, he was in like the highest point of his life and then Ryan Dunn gets in a DUI and passes away and that puts him into a hard spiral of drinking and alcoholism. And he never really re supposed, you know, this is what everyone says, that he never really bounced back from that. He sort of made some bounce backs little bits here and there, and he's been trying and struggling. And I feel for him, you know what I mean, with this placement, because that's tough. Um, the moon is in the third house of brothers. Isn't that crazy of siblings? Third Baba. Courage, servants, maintain, siblings, etc. I don't know if you guys can see that pop-up window. I just clicked on the third house cusp. If you have a call, you can just click on anything that's blue, and it will tell you about it. But basically, the third house is that everyone knows the third house is the house of um, of brothers, siblings, brotherhood, but like literally friends and brothers, you know what I mean? And or literally a brother. But that's who he who is like. And, you know, just having the moon, the third also speaks to why he had such a big camaraderie and um, had a lot of bros and friends. You see what I'm saying? Um. So that was really an unavoidable event. That was like a faded event, honestly, that he couldn't avoid um, with that Saturn and Rahu in the 12th. And also just think about that. Like K2 in Pisces is the chart of someone who tends to like to like escape and not be focused too much on worldly responsibilities. And Rahu and Saturn are in Virgo. So it's like, oh my God, you really cannot escape. You cannot risk drinking or drug. Basically Saturn and Rahu is a really tough placement that will almost always get one involved in taking drugs. So don't feel bad if you ever had to do that and you have Saturn Rahu um, because there's a lot of painful events that can come in life, you know? And so one way to just deal with that is to numb ourselves um, through different vices. <clears throat> Rahu and Saturn Virgo, it's tough because it's like really just sobriety is very important there. And working through things on a sober level but at the same time, uh, it's in the 12th house. So there's actually a spiritual quality involved. And uh, to be completely honest, Saturn Rahu in the 12th here is a placement that, you know, kind of gets you involved in like having a lot of demons or darker issues that you're working through. And that kind of makes sense with him. You know, I mean, he's definitely has more of a goth, dark, troubled vibe. Um. So this is all, this chart really makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Okay, so I was just curious. I wanted to look at exactly when Ryan Dunn passed away. He passed away in June of 2011. So this would have been during his moon Rahu Dasha. Isn't that crazy? So it's so 
I mean, it's so specific because Rahu, it would be Rahu or Saturn that we would expect, you know, to cause that, this loss, this tragic event. We wouldn't expect it in like moon Jupiter, you know, because Jupiter is actually delighting and ruling the moon and helping it a little bit. And is a little more of a lucky planet, even though it has other issues that we've described. So, wow, even down to the Antar Dasha really made a lot of sense. Um, really unfortunate. Okay, so just for fun, just to go a little bit more in depth, um, I'm not going to explain all the little details of this because, again, this is more like a collegiate black belt level example, but you just want to follow along as best you can. But um, look at the D30. Moon is totally impaired or vikala by Mars and Rahu, but it is helped by Jupiter. So he doesn't die. This is crazy because in the Gemini system, when Jupiter is aspecting in a situation like this, it keeps you from dying. It happens to another person around you. That's ex like uh, you guys who've gone through the my course or other like courses on that. It's like the I'm talking about the yoga about burning your house down, having your house burned down. And then if Jupiter aspects, it's at a house near you or like in your neighborhood. In the same way, this Jupiter aspecting saved him from dying in a DUI, but he lost a brother, a friend. Moon is in Gemini, sign of brothers, sign of friends, with Mars, planet of brothers, friends, siblings, teammates, with Rahu, an eclipse, a loss, a death, you know? D30 really checks out, doesn't it? Now, D3, Drekana Varga, the Varga of siblings. So he was in Moon Dasha. He, his uh, D30 got activated with all these afflictions. In the Moon Dasha and the D3, Leo gets activated, actually, Um and it's in good dignity here, but it, and it's with Mars. Um, it's also aspected by Jupiter. So that's blessing it. And then there's a Saturn, but it's pretty strong. But then a debilitated sun. And the debilitated sun is the Lord of the Third in this Varga. Um, so it kind of has to do with brothers. And so there's an aspect, a debilitated sun. And those are all cruel planets. You know, it's Mars, Sun, Saturn, cruel things hitting there and only Jupiter kind of helping. But still, shows a very cruel event um, with siblings and brothers during the moon Dasha, doesn't it? Okay, so what to make of all this? Um, you know, if if Bam was to, you know, get a reading from me, I'd say, well, hey, dude, you actually are in your Mars Dasha now. So there is actually a lot more hope, a lot more promise, because Mars is delighted by Jupiter. So that Mars is being helped by Jupiter, it can manifest, he can overcome a lot of his struggles um, during this period, and he kind of has been. That's the thing is he kind of did have some sober breakthroughs. He was a little bit skateboarding, doing a little bit better um, since February of 2019, or around when the Mars period began. And that will run until 2026 when the Rahu period ends. So I think he has a good chance to like really heal. Um, and hopefully he can heal and grow bef a lot before 2026, because otherwise that might become a tougher time for him if not. If so, then he'll probably be like, you know, thriving and doing a lot better then. So uh, what per what exact period is he in now? Um, Mars K2. So K2 is in the sixth. So that deals with like enmity and en enemies and stuff. And so, yeah, like he's not getting feeling very supported or whatever right now but he's about to go into a mars venus period venus is one of his strongest planets but that worries me because venus is the the planet that starves him of his well it gets him too involved in the comma the pleasure the partying and luxury side of life so that we'll have to see how that turns out i'm not going to really make a strong prediction um it worries me a little bit that he's in the dasha of the seven of mars because that can be a like a killer Maraca planet for Libra rising, right? Um, but hmm, I would think that I think he's gone through the toughest part of that already with the the Mars Saturn or Mars Sun period. So I think he's like, you know, I think I don't know. I'm not gonna actually make a full prediction because I don't do longevity, and I, I think I've already said enough here um, for the public and stuff like that. And it definitely would not be appropriate to predict longevity um or anything like that in this case so like 
I don't know. I just, you know, I've, I read the articles in the news. Um, and as an astrologer, I'm not one of those people who's like, oh, you're really bad or oh, you're really good. I like to just see it in a nuanced angle and see what's really going on in this person's world in their life. And I hope that I've painted a good picture of that. Um, and to be honest, I think it's kind of I got kind of annoyed with reading about like Steve-O and all, all these other jackass guys like shitting on him just because he hasn't gotten sober. It's like that's not the way to get help someone to get sober is to just shit on them and humiliate them in public. Like they're writing posts and stuff like publicly, like humiliating him. Uh, that is not the way you get a dude to heal. Get that dude to like get a reading, you know, or like get some sort of therapy. Don't put him in a rehab that's like he doesn't want to be in. Put him in a place where like he might be into astrology because he's a kind of goth dude or whatever. Or he might, you get what I'm saying, like, like work with him. And it seems like they're almost like just pissed and mad at him, but they're not themselves healed enough to really help and come at him from a professional or from like a qualified or actually healed standpoint they're just like well well i got over my tough stuff i still want to do drugs and party but i can't so you shouldn't either and that's kind of not the way to approach healing right um so anyways this was just like fun video i felt called to do as a skateboarder someone who knew a lot about this guy in the past um and just heard some news stories about him and happened to have his birth info all right thanks you guys